Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean David. Hello, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name, of course, is Sean David, and I welcome you to your weekly dose of old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to take a look at what NBA legends have to say about one of my favorite players of the 1990s, Latrell Sprewell. I'm pretty sure you've never seen a video like this on Sprewell before, and it was very difficult to find some clips about him, but yeah, I did my best, so let's see what I got. But before we start, let's take a quick look at the video of today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by AG1 by Athletic Greens. AG1 combines nine health products working together as one in a daily nutritional drink, replacing your need for many individual vitamins and supplements. Okay, let's be honest. As much as I always wanted to take care of my nutrition, in reality, it was just too much taking care of everything. I'm always on the move and always on the road, so I needed a solution. And for me personally, the AG1 drink was just that. All I had to do was to include the AG1 by Athletic Greens into my daily morning ritual, just mix the drink and I was ready to go. Super simple, super easy. And the results speak for themselves. I have a lot more energy because the AG1 provides nutrients that support sustained physical and mental energy. Like the kind we need on a busy day or a heavy week. Also, it includes key nutrients for the energy powerhouse of the body. The mitochondria which support heart health and help with energy. Another thing that I noticed was my mental clarity. A new role supporting formula that helps me multitask and manage my ongoing to-do list with ease and attention to detail. Now let's talk about the taste. Now if we're honest, most healthy stuff tastes terrible. So I didn't expect too much at first, but I can assure you that the AG1 tastes not bad at all. So if you want to get your nutrition back on track, act now and give it a try. Click on the link in the description box and get your AG1 by Athletic Greens today. Now the first player's opinion that I want to take a look at is from Alan Yusnu, who obviously was a teammate of Latrell Sprewell's when they were both playing for the New York Knicks and even made it to the NBA Finals. Let's take a look. So we were talking earlier about playing with Spree and how, you know, sometimes he was good at that, he would get to the cup, and sometimes we kind of had to play off of each other and figure out different ways, you know, to, to do that. Well, you guys are such different players, and you seem like different personalities too. Like, he seemed like so intense, you mm -hmm. seemed a little more like cool and... and you know? Yeah, I think we, we I think we complemented each other in that way. I think practices were, you know, our practices were very intense. Do you ever like get mad at each other in practice? Oh man, you you can't be, play at this level and you know what I mean and not get like really intense. You know, we never fought, but it's, it was a few times when people thought they would have to step in because it's it gets physical. He's a competitor. You know, yeah. when you when you compete, there's only one way to to do it. You know, you can't really go halfway. <laughs> 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 man, but when I played Classic with Spree, man, he was the most athletic two guard. And this is the time when Jordan had retired, man. And playing with veterans like Spree, Billy Owens, um, Tim Hardaway, who else was on the team? Uh, oh, Avery Johnson, Gat Victor Gun. Alexander, Mr. Jennings. Who else, Spree? Gat. Victor Alexander. Ooh, that's classic. You named yeah. some hitters, boy. Yeah. Man, Spree used to have the fastest cars, man. He used to have like Grand Nationals and stuff. So the first time I ever get to San Francisco, ever. The Golden State Warriors select Latrell Sprewell from the University of Alabama. Is this a joke? There is no Latrell Sprewell. We couldn't figure out who he was. He comes into camp. He's Superman. This is like striking gold. I think you saw Latrell Sprewell when he first made the All-Star team and got a chance to match up with Jordan and you saw what a great player he was. I remember talking to Michael later and you know he'd say to him, well, we're the toughest guys you ever had to play against. And he used to say, well now, Sprewell guards me as well as anybody. He was lightning quick. Coach used to put him in the game and say, just shut him down, don't let him catch the ball, don't let him touch the ball. And Spree was in people's jocks. The thing that probably makes Sprewell most effective is his energy. He's a three-dimensional player. You know, he's a guy who can break you down. He can shoot the jump shot. You know, he can make passes. He's just real smooth and sleek with his game. 
Yeah, Latrell came right before training camp. They released him from Golden State. Right, because of the choke, choking incident. Did you guys ever speak about that? Like, bro, what were you thinking choking your coach? Like, did you ever have that talk with him? No, nah, I don't I don't remember me having a talk with him about that. Mm -hmm. um, I understood it. <laughs> you know, right. I understood somebody feeling that way. Um, but uh, I just, I didn't get into it with Spree about that because he had his reasonings behind it. I never get into another man's business about you know what happened all i cared about man is you are you ready to hoop and uh, are you prepared let's let's get out there and get get the battling but to get in a, another man's private business well it wasn't private because everybody knew it if i knew but about i didn't want to i didn't want that to be the, the focus because he had enough of that coming from the media i said sam do you know spree well i'm like i do know spree well i call spree i said spree man i'm in minnesota right now you should come Couple hours later, trade done. So you know you got me, Spree, and KG. I met Sam and Spree at a perfect time in my life. Like I didn't know Spree before he got to the Knicks, but what I knew was playing against him, he, how he competed, and what he could do. We needed Spree coming here. The New York mentality is Spree mentality. That's what I know. That's exactly what I knew, and that's I knew you were gonna come here and it was gonna be game busters. Right. I mean, we made it to the finals. That was the 50 game season. Mm -hmm. Short season. Yeah. yeah, man. We needed a spark plug, and you was our spark plug, bro. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah. It worked out definitely. I had it. I mean, I don't. I don't know if you know this, but I told um, the year my first contract year, it was I was up. It was a two guard year. I was up. Allen was up, and um, Reggie Miller was up. So the Knicks sign. Allen from Detroit. So Allen kind of set the bar for the mm -hmm. uh, for two guards that year. Aaron Tellum was my agent at the time. Oh, right. And uh, they, they showed no interest in me. So when we played the Knicks, I, I pulled Pat over. I said, Pat, I said, you tell whoever uh, y'all uh, GM or your manager is, I, like, I, I, I think that's messed up that y'all didn't even give me a look because I, you know, I, I really wanted to come to New York. I love New York. You know, I, I felt like y'all should have gave me a look. Y'all just went and signed Allen without trying to see if I wanted to come here. So I, now I got a chip on my shoulder. I want to beat the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go at the Knicks every time I play. As far as basketball goes, he really presents what you want. You know, in the court, he's all out war. But off the court, he's intelligent, articulate, into intellectual pursuits, kind of like chess and computers. So he, it's a very interesting dichotomy there. A lot of people just look at him with his cornrows and they say, oh, he's a thug, or he's this or he's that. But he's very intelligent. I mean, he's fixed my car. He's a mechanic. If you've been in his house in Oakland, I mean, he has a full-on auto body shop in there. He takes stereo equipment VCRs apart and then puts them back together. You know, the guy was a social work major in college, which a lot of people don't realize. There's a Latrell Sprewell outside of basketball. He just chooses not to let people know that. A few years ago, at a charity, I purchased the Knicks ball boy, ball girl for a day for my daughter. And Sprewell was the, the Nick assigned to the, the ball kid of the day. The way he treated my daughter made me think that perhaps all those bad things that Spree used to do were an act, and that this was the genuine Spree. Playing under control as the Knicks' sixth man, Sprewell averaged 16 points as New York reached the 1999 NBA Finals. Although the overachievers lost to the Spurs in five games, Sprewell had gotten what he always craved, respect. That was, I guess, his coming out party. He's been waiting since he got here to shine, and he finally got his, his opportunity, and he took full advantage of it. Here's Sprewell! Yeah! Whoa! Slam it down with a tomahawk! Sprewell is like lightning! And he did it with his energy and his skill and his personality, and the team loved him. Marcus Camby and those guys were saying, he's our leader. Imagine that. Now he's their leader. Unbelievable. You know, just like I said in the beginning of the video, Sprewell was one of my favorite players of the 1990s and even in the 2000s. And the reason is obvious. First of all, I think he's a very much underrated defender because even Michael Jordan said it back in the days that Sprewell was one of the greatest defenders he ever had to face. And that, yeah, that means a lot. Second, he was a sensational dunker. He had such an incredible energy level every single game. You could see that he was loving the game. He had just 
everything an NBA superstar really needed. And I'm 100% sure that if it wasn't for the choking incident back in the days, we would talk about a Hall of Fame player. But yeah, unfortunately, things went down south. Even though he still had a good time with the Knicks, it could have been much better. Anyway, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully you'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.